Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, once again, uh, I welcome you to the anatomy quick recap. Uh, and today's topic is from the systemic embryology, gastrointestinal system. Uh, so for a detailed version, please go and watch my channel. This is just a quick recap and we'll try to solve some of the questions as well. So let's begin. We have the foregut, midgut and hindgut. Uh, and we have a connection with the yolk sac that is the whitelow intestinal duct and that is with the midgut and there is a small endodermal projection that is known as allantoic diverticulum or allantois. I have done a detailed version about all these uh, topics. Please go and watch before you watch this because otherwise it will be very difficult for you to understand. Now uh, we can see that the allantoic diverticulum is more or less seen towards the hindgut. And the vital intestinal duct once after its use, uh, after extracting uh, most of the nutrients from the yolk sac, it will just de get degenerated. Now the distal end of the hindgut is what you call as cloaca. Now you can see the primordial germ cells which are actually uh, coming from the yolk sac and later developing uh, in the developing gonads. Talking about the blood supply. We have the three major vessels from the abdominal aorta supplying the foregut, midgut and hindgut. For the foregut you have the celiac artery, for the midgut you have the superior mesenteric artery and for the hindgut you have the inferior mesenteric artery. Uh, but you know that duodenum is derived from both the foregut and hindgut. So what will happen? It will be supplied by both branches from the celiac artery as well as superior mesenteric artery. When we mentioned about the mesentery, it is just a peritoneal fold which suspends the entire GIT. So the part of the mesentery lying behind the stomach, this is the stomach, so behind the stomach you call it as dorsal mesogastrium. Behind the duodenum, the same mesentery is known as dorsal mesoduodenum and the term mesentery which we usually use now is actually the one which suspends the small intestine that is the mesentery proper. And the one which suspends the colon, you call it as dorsal mesocolon. Now, uh, we know that the dorsal mesogastrium is actually getting attached to the greater curvature and later it forms the greater omentum. And the part, the ventral mes uh, mesogastrium, which is lying in front of the stomach, uh, is later divided by the presence of the liver into the part which extends between the lesser curvature of the stomach and the liver as the lesser omentum and the part which extends from the liver onto the abdominal wall as the falciform ligament. Coming about, uh, talking about the development of the hepatobiliary apparatus, uh, again I have done a detailed version for the time being. There is a say, hepatic diverticulum which arises from the junction of the foregut and midgut. Later it divides into two buds, one is known as the pars hepatica and the other one is known as pars cystica. And pars hepatica will be forming the liver parenchyma and pars cystica will form the gallbladder. Now the stroma of the liver, this is the septum transversum. So the stroma of the liver will be derived from the septum transversum. Now let's see the development of the pancreas. Just below the hepatic bud you know there is a ventral bud and there is a dorsal bud. They are the pancreatic buds. This is the ventral pancreatic bud and this is the dorsal pancreatic bud. And later what happens is this ventral bud will undergo uh, a rotation so that it will come and lie just below the dorsal pancreatic bud and later it will get fused. So uh, this ventral pancreatic bud is giving rise to the uncinate process and uh, the dorsal pancreatic bud is giving rise to the rest of the body especially the tail of the pancreas. Talking about the duct of the pancreas, uh, in the beginning uh, we had one duct for the dorsal pancreatic bud and one duct for the ventral pancreatic bud. Later what happens is there is a communication between the dorsal and ventral pancreatic bud. This is known as the anastomotic channel and this portion uh, will degenerate. The duct of the dorsal pancreatic bud will usually degenerate. So the duct of the ventral pancreatic bud with the anastomosis and with the distal end of the dorsal pancreatic duct will join together to form the main pancreatic duct. If this portion persists, that will be forming the accessory pancreatic duct. Now duodenum is supplied by, it is supplied by the superior mesenteric artery and if you have celiac trunk in this option, you can say both. Then ventral bud of pancreas rotates 
270 degree for detailed version please see the uh, session which I have done then dorsal pancreatic bud forms the tail of pancreas uncinate process is developed from the uh, ventral pancreatic bud coming to the development of spleen uh, it is actually formed from a mass of mesenchymal cells located between the layers of the dorsal mesogastrium and we call them as spleen and coli and the spleen is first lobulated but the lobules usually disappear after birth accessory pancreatic duct is formed from the duct of it is from the proximal part of the dorsal but usually this portion degenerates if it persists it will form the accessory pancreatic duct Midgut lobe is connected to yolk sac through. It is connected to the yolk sac through vital or intestinal duct. Uh, you can see the midgut lobe. Usually, uh, it comes out of the abdominal cavity to lie outside because there is no enough space for the midgut lobe to be accommodated. And as the fetus grow in size, there will be space in the abdominal cavity. And by around 10th week, this physiological umbilical hernia will return back to the abdominal cavity to occupy its normal position. So the question is reduction of midgut hernia normally occurs by it is around 10th week. These are the various positions of the appendix. We know that uh, the tip of the app appendix varies in position. It can be either behind the cecum, just next to the cecum, it can uh, point towards the ileum, towards the uh, sacral promontory likewise. So. Uh, this is the retrocecal behind the cecum and this is said to be the most common position. These are the other positions. You can see the paracecal, you can see the pelvic, you can see the subsecal, you can see the preilial in front of the ileum and posterior, and the remaining uh, accounts to about 0.27 percentage. So among these, retrocecal is the most common position. So the most common position of appendix is retrocecal. Now let's see what happens to the distal end of the hindgut. We know that this is the elendoise which is getting connected to the distal end of the hindgut that is so the distal end of the enlarged portion of the hindgut is known as cloaca. Now there is a septum coming from above that is the urorectal septum which divides the cloaca into a ventral portion that is the primitive urogenital sinus and the dorsal portion is the uh, rectum forming the rectum and anal canal. So let's see this is the ventral portion the urinary bladder is developing from the urogenital sinus and from the dorsal portion you have the anorectal canal formed. Now when we discuss about the anal canal again anal canal is also having uh, two developmental origins. We can see that the upper two-third is developed from the hindgut up to the pectinate line or dentate line. And this is deriving its blood supply from the superior rectal artery which is a continuation of the inferior mesenteric artery supplying the hindgut. Now the lower part, lower one third is actually derived from the anal pit. Anal pit so it is ectodermal in origin and it is supplied by the inferior rectal artery which is a branch of internal pudendal artery. Now there is a line below this portion that is the white line of Hilton and here it, there is a transition from the uh, non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium of the lower part and the keratinized stratified squamous epithelium of the skin that is uh, why it is known as the white line of uh, Hilton. Now talking about ectopic pancreas you can see the pancreatic tissue in other sites like mucosa of the stomach, proximal duodenum, jejunum, pyloric antrum and even in Meckel's diverticulum. There is another interesting feature during the development of pancreas that is known as the annular pancreas. So we know that there is a dorsal pancreatic bud and there is a ventral pancreatic bud. Sometimes this ventral pancreatic bud will be bilobed and so what happens one lobe will go on this direction and the other one will go in this direction so that ultimately the entire thing will encircle the duodenum and will get fused together. So that condition is known as annular pancreas and if there is a tumor in this region it will result in obstruction of the uh, second part of duodenum and usually seen in association with Down syndrome and will result in intestinal malrotation 
and also uh, you will get associated cardiac defects which is true about annular pancreas around the first part of duodenum bifurcation of the ventral pancreatic but dorsal but fails to rotate which is it is due to the bifurcation of the ventral pancreatic bud. It is not around the first part, it is around the second part. Dorsal bud fails to rotate. It is not because of the failure of rotation. It is because the two lobes of the ventral pancreatic bud will encircle the second part of duodenum. Which is true about omphalose. It is a physio uh, the physiological herniation persists. Intestine and liver commonly herniated, associated with chromosomal anomalies, all the above. So, it is uh, all the above, that is the physiological herniation which persists, that condition is known as omphalocele. And you can get intestine as well as liver and it is usually associated with chromosomal anomalies. So, identify this condition. You can see the loops of intestine lying outside the abdominal cavity but it is covered by amnion. So, that condition is known as omphalocele. You can see the amnion covering it and you can see the intestinal loops. Uh, so this is called congenital omphalocele and this occurs when the physiological herniation persists if it is not going back into the abdominal cavity by roughly 10th week. Intestine and liver are commonly herniated. You will get uh, chromosomal anomalies as well associated with it. Now uh, what do you mean by umbilical hernia? Herniation of the intestine after the return of the intestine into the abdominal cavity during 10th week. That is what is meant by umbilical hernia. So it is not persistence. Uh, the physiological umbilical hernia will get reduced and after that if something is coming out through the umbilicus that is known as umbilical hernia. Now identify the clinical condition. You can see the loops of intestine lying outside the abdominal cavity but without a covering. So that condition is known as gastroschisis that is due to a defect in the anterior abdominal wall uh, and it is usually seen lateral to the median plane of the anterior abdominal wall and through this defect you can get the abdominal viscera herniating. It is not usually associated with chromosomal anomalies whereas omphalocele is usually associated with chromosomal anomalies. Another interesting condition is known as congenital megacolon or Hirschsprung disease. You can see the megacolon here. Uh, you can see the ganglionated nerve fibers but in this portion they are absent and just above that portion you can see the large intestine dilated. So this is known as megacolon. So it is dominantly inherited multigenic disorder and the gene affected is RUT gene coding tyrosine kinase receptor on chromosome 10q11. This why I am stressing is you can get it as, a, uh, as an option in the MCQ. Rectum is the most commonly involved region. Uh, here what happens is there is absence of parasympathetic ganglion cells in the distal colon due to failure of the neural crest cells to migrate. The neural crest cells won't migrate into this region and because of that you won't get the parasympathetic ganglion cells in that region. And so what happens is the colon will be dilated above the affected region. Another uh, condition is known as Meckel's diverticulum or ileal diverticulum. Uh, this is actually due to the persistence of vitellointestinal duct which connects the yolk sac with the midgut. It is roughly seen in 2% of the individuals. Uh, it is the rule of 2. 2 feet away from the ileocecal valve on the anti-mesentric border of the ileum. And this diverticulum may sometimes contain the pancreatic as well as the gastric mucosa. Can you identify this clinical condition? Most of the diagrams I have taken from Langman's embryology book. Uh, so this is apple peel atresia. It looks like an apple peel, right? So it is the atresia of the proximal jejunum. Uh, so the affected portion is coiled around the mesentric remnant just like an apple peel. So this is uh, a quick recap about the development of the GIT. Hope you liked it. Please leave your comments and please do subscribe and share so that I will be tempted to do more and more videos. Thank you. Thanks for watching.